Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to talk about another older story that came out. I think this was maybe like six or seven years ago, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, we talked about the first one, uh, which was called Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four. And it had Venom in it. Uh, it had like uh, the black costume and Spider-Man uh, teaming up with Fantastic Four. And basically what they did was, uh, they it's four issues and it's uh, written by uh, Christos Gage. And the art is actually by um, uh, Mario Alberti. And the storyline was each issue would go through a different decade. Uh, so it would kind of follow like the 60s era, the 70s era, the 80s era, and the 90s era. Um, and and kind of catch you up to like the 2000s and stuff. And it was just Christos Gage taking like, you know, existing stories and kind of writing side things that happen around them while connecting them all together uh, to have like a story that connects all of these decades as one story, uh, but shows and references things that happened in those decades. So like the Clone Saga, obviously, or the time Spider-Man was a member of the Fantastic Four with Wolverine, Ghost Rider, and Hulk. Like they basically touch on each little era and try to add something new to it. And I thought these were fun. I think Christos Gage did a really good job with the first one, uh, Spider-Man Fantastic Four, we talked about already. And then they also made a Spider-Man and X-Men one, which is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, this one does not have, uh, you know, it has the black costume in one issue, issue two of it. But the main focus of this is going to be Carnage, obviously. So we have a Carnage issue in here where it has, uh, it's, you know, Wolverine um, actually fighting Carnage. It has, uh, you know, the X-Men fighting Carnage. It's pretty fun. And what they do is they have this storyline they built with Mr. Sinister and it goes through, like I said, the decades and he comes up with this, you know, new plan to, you know, imp improve his clones because as we know, he likes to make clones. He has a deep infatuation with uh, Scott Summers and Jean Grey and their bloodline and what their bloodlines combined could cause and what could it could create. And, and that's what kind of Christos Gage goes off of. And once again, Mario comes back to do the artwork to it. And it's fantastic. It's a really fun book. Uh, it feels very timeless. It has like one of those kind of timeless feels where even though it's in different decades, it all kind of mirrors together and, and, uh, and looks really well the way Mario did it because he has kind of a retro style, but mixed in with modern day uh you know uh you know Di dynamic you know scenes and angles and then the colors are done really well in the book and everything so so the whole package i think is really fun and in this one spider-man and x-men we have uh, mr sinister going around trying to figure out like the perfect genetic you know material he needs he comes across craven the hunter and you know craven fights you know wolverine he or doesn't fight wolverine yet he, it starts off with the original x-men and them teaming up with you know spider-man and going through that decade like the 60s and stuff and uh, and then they battle craven you know craven comes in later in the second issue too and it takes place right after uh, you know craven's death so in the first issue craven makes a deal with mr sinister and he says hey you know here are those samples you need um why did you need my blood too and mr sinister says well i have some plans you have some unique blood as well and i have some other plans with stuff i'm doing with mutant dna so i might use yours and combine it or something he's like but either way here you're paid you know you paid for it uh you got samples of the x-men's dna because that's what uh you know craven was doing he was attacking the x-men and he got like he cut each of the original members and got blood on his spear and then take you know like wipe the blood off and put it in a little um you know tube and gave it to mr sinister so now mr sinister at the end of the first issue has the x-men's dna and uh, and he has Craven's DNA. So the second issue is Craven is dead. It's right after Craven's last hunt, and it's leading up to the events that uh, for X Men fans is called the Mutant Massacre, where Sabretooth and the Marauders, you know, with Mister Sinister, you know, too, um, go underground and kill most of the Morlocks that live underground in the sewers. They're the mutants that are that consider themselves unfit to live among human because of the way they look they're too mutated i guess um and they some are you know malformed in certain ways and so they decided to build a society underground in the sewers of new york the marauders uh, go down there and kill them and that's the kind of the storyline that's here and spider-man helps the x-men go take down Sabretooth and you know hunt them down after the murder and stuff of the morlocks and uh, it's pretty good it's a really good story very emotional obviously uh i'm a big x-men fan and and that mutant massacre storyline was uh kind of in the early days of x-men stuff i read and uh pulled me in big time and made me a Sabretooth fan even though he was clearly a bad guy uh but he was he's a he's one of those solid bad guys where you're like all right this is a good this is a guy i love to hate and uh, and Sabretooth is one of the first villains ever 
that I had a feeling like I felt that way towards where I'm like, it feels good to hate this guy. He is just a monster. And then he proceeded to be so, you know, so on in the comics afterwards with, uh, you know, after Mutant Massacre with the stuff he did with Wolverine and everything like that, where he would show up every year and taunt Wolverine on his birthday. Uh, and Wolverine didn't even remember when his birthday was, but Sabretooth would show up every year on the same day and torment him. So yeah, definitely a, a crazy, crazy nutcase uh, with uh, intense powers and always beat Wolverine. He just always beat him. Um, so it, he always scared me a little bit as a kid too, because I'm like, wow, this guy, like I kept rooting for Wolverine and I was always let down. I'm like, man, Wolverine just can't get a one up on this guy. He does, a, you know, he does sometimes, but mostly he, he lost to Sabretooth. So reading him here in this and retelling the Mutant Massacre with a new angle to it was really fun. But the crux of this thing that we're going to talk about is at the end of the second issue, you know, uh, it's Mr. Sinister standing over Craven's grave and he says, hey, I still have your DNA. Don't worry. Um, you know, I I'm going to make sure that, you know, since you've done so much for me that I'm going to pay you back somehow and you will in some way live again. And so issue three is now the, during the Clone Saga, it's in the 90s, you know, passing the 80s of the Mutant Massacre and into the 90s. And uh, and we have, uh, you know, uh, Ben Riley is Spider-Man. And Ben Riley, you know, the X-Men show up and they say, hey, we got this file on this guy, Cletus Cassidy. It turns out he's one of your, your villains. And he's like, yeah, I know about Cletus. He goes, you know, uh, I, he possessed me recently as Spider Carnage. And they're like, okay, he goes, but you know, Wolverine's like, you smell the same. And he's like, yeah, but I'm not the Spider-Man you knew. And Wolverine's like, what are you talking about? He's like, you smell the exact same. And he's like, yeah. I'm a clone, or maybe Peter was a clone. I don't really know. You know we don't know yet. It, sound, it seemed like Peter was a clone. Um, so he's like, so I'm just taking on the mantle for now and, and trying to figure things out. So Wolverine's like, oh, clones. He goes, tell me about it. Because <laughs> I guess at this point, he's already passed through the Albert storyline and, and all that stuff. Uh, and uh, and so it's it's pretty cool. So it's, you know, they had that set up. And he's like, all right, you got this file on Cletus Cassidy. Why does Mr. Sinister want him? And he's like, well, because uh, it doesn't look like he wants Cletus's DNA, but he wants a sample of the symbiote because he thinks maybe the symbiote, because the way it's unique, it's not like Venom, um, it's unique because it was born here on Earth and it was tied directly to Cletus Cassidy and in his bloodstream. Um, that might be something inside his symbiote that can... Um, you know, sustain this thing that Sinister is trying to do. He's trying to make these clones, but they keep falling apart the way the Jackals clones sometimes do. And so, uh, so you know, Ben is like, yeah, I think this is what's happening. I think uh, he found a way to use the symbiote to bind all of these DNAs together and, uh, and keep them as one solid entity in one mind or something. He goes, so it looks like he wants a sample of Cletus's DNA, or not Cletus's, but the symbiote that Cletus has, the Carnage suit, he wants a sample of it. So best thing we got to do is we got to get to Ravencroft and we got to defend Carnage basically and make sure nobody breaks him out. But by the time they get there, it's too late. You know, Mr. Sinister already showed up and uh, he does break Carnage out. The two of them get into it. He talks to Carnage at first and he says, hey, like, give me a sample of you and I'll let you escape. And Carnage's like, fine. He takes off a piece of his finger and, uh, you know, like the symbiote finger, he like cuts it off and he goes, here, take it. And Mr. Sinister's like, all right. And he puts it in a tube and starts to leave. And then the X-Men and Spider-Man show up and then a battle ensues, obviously. Uh, so so we don't get a, a ton of stuff here. It's not like there's great character development or anything, but you do get to see some of Cletus and Carnage going at it with the X-Men. Wolverine at this point doesn't have adamantium claws anymore. They were ripped out, obviously, uh, during that whole big, uh, big storyline called Fatal Attractions. And so now he has the bone claws again, so no adamantium on him. So he you know, goes to stab Carnage and Carnage bites the claws and chews them up and swallows them and is like, mmm, tasty, like bring me more. And uh, then the X-Men have to like keep trying to fight him. They're trying to, the Iceman's trying to freeze him and everything. And then finally uh, Wolverine grows the claws back and stabs Carnage and Carnage's like, wait a minute, I thought I ate these. And he's like, yeah, they grow back. He's like, let's see if anything of yours grows back. And then Wolverine just starts stabbing them like crazy. And then uh, Iceman comes in and freezes them for, for good this time and puts them in a, a full like block of ice and he can't escape. Um, and the cold is like, you know, you know, affecting with the symbiote a little bit. So, uh, so they able to put him back in his cell. And in the meantime though, obviously Mr. Sinister escaped with that sample and he still has all the samples from before. So when he gets back to his lab uh, at the end of the issue, he's putting together like his super clone, his basically his big experiment that he's been working on throughout these years of the storyline happening. And so uh, now in the final issue, because this one was just Ben Riley and some of the X-Men, like the, the 90s modern X-Men, or the 90s X-Men, I guess I'd say, the modern one come in the fourth storyline. Um, when they're like the Joss Whedon Astonishing X-Men era uh, and they have Spider-Man's back, it's Peter Parker again and they even mention that. He's like, yeah, nope, it's me, it's Peter, you know, <laughs> whatever. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that whole clone business and he's like, yeah, he's like, what are you going to do? We all we all had, had to face clones at some point in our careers. So, um, you know, there's 
there's nice banter there. I think Christos Gage does a really good job capturing all these characters. Uh, but then he builds up Mr. Sinister, and Mr. Sinister, what he creates is he takes Craven's DNA, he mixes in the powers of the X-Men. There seem to be some kind of apocalypse strand, maybe, because uh, cre he creates a new Craven that I think goes by the name Zraven, um, or maybe the X makes a K sound also. But it's Craven, but instead of the K, it's an X, so it's like X-Raven. Um, so anyway, so Zraven, whatever you want to call him, he's now, uh, you know, pumped up he's uh, he's a clone but he's got the powers of the original five x-men or some of them anyway he's got like an apocalypse thing on his mouth uh because again mr sinister's obviously always been infatuated with apocalypse as well uh going back to his like early origin stories when he was like in the the renaissance period or something and he was like you know and working with um i think or maybe it was the late 1800s and he's working with tesla i can't remember they tied in mr sinister to some of that um but you know I, i'm his his origins and his his history is hard for me to keep uh, in, in you know in uh, in one place sometimes but uh and uh and so anyway so mr sinister Put, to, to put together this being that is like, you know, Craven, but it has these powers um, that also has, I guess, that carnage strand that is holding all of that together so he can willingly shoot the lasers out of his eyes. It's like, it's almost like the Deadpool from the Wolverine X-Men Origins movie where he's got like multiple powers in him, but it's Craven the Hunter. And then Spider-Man tries to reason with it. He says, hey, Craven died, like I, but I know there's a piece of Craven still inside you there. And, uh, you know, is maybe I can get through to him. Maybe I can talk to him and rationalize with him. And Th that part of that clone does start to come out and Spider-Man's able to outsmart him in a way but also pull out the Craven personality and the Craven personality looks at himself and sees an abomination you know because obviously Craven's going to get tied up in the uh, endangered species or whatever that storyline was where he gets resurrected um, and it's par part of that whole like you know ritual thing that he has to do uh, and being brought back and he hated being brought back so that mentality seems to stick here with this version too where he kind of sees himself as an abomination so the last act he does is he goes and he takes on Mr. Sinister and presumably they fight to the death and i'm guessing mr sinister wins because he's still around and the craven clone is not uh so yeah it's a fun storyline uh, the artwork like i said is really great and we get this moment uh these cool moments with carnage actually fighting the x-men and that's a lot of fun because we never really got that in any of the comics. I mean, we got Wolverine from time to time, like when he was an Avenger and stuff like that. Uh, but we've never gotten the X-Men, like, you know, full on fighting Carnage. And you get it in this one. And it's a lot of fun. And I'm glad that Christos Gage came up with this storyline. And he did, a you know, another book along with his Spider-Man and Fantastic Four. I can't really remember which one came out first. I think the order I read him in, though, was Spider-Man Fantastic Four and then X-Men. Uh, but I was late to the party of these books. Uh, so, uh, so, and, you know, I'm so sure that some of you guys maybe have read these and maybe some of you have not so if you're late to the party i highly recommend going to pick them up spider-man and x-men by christos gage and mario alberti but also they did spider-man and fantastic four the same team same creative team and uh it, they're fantastic they're two really great runs i'd love to see them do one more like this maybe with like a different group or like spider-man and the avengers or something um that would be really cool to see especially since christos gage wrote like some of that avengers initiative stuff and i'd love for him to revisit that so uh i don't know if you're out there christos i'd love to see you know another mini series like this at one point uh, but these two are fantastic and I wanted to talk about them and I thought this would be a fun flashback episode since I don't have any money right now to go pick up new books because uh, there's new books coming out tomorrow for Absolute Carnage I won't be able to buy them until Friday I'm going to pick them up though at LA Comic Con and I figured since I'm going to get paid that day and I'll already be at the show that maybe I'll just buy my books there so I can come home and review them for you guys. Um, so, yeah, so I won't be going to my typical comic store, you know, usual spot to pick up books this week. I'm going to have to wait till Friday and get them then. So I figured, yeah, let's get some other stories in here and, uh, and other new stuff. So now that we've talked about this storyline, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below because in the next episode, we're going to talk about the stuff that came out of New York Comic Con, like the Venom, the end one shot that's going to come out. And I think there was like a couple other things announced and talked about there as well. So we'll dive into all that in the next episode for sure. And then hopefully some movie news pops up. And then this will get us through this week. I'll do my Absolute Carnage reviews over the weekend. And then we'll be caught up again for next week. And that's why I'm trying to pump out so many videos today and why I recorded so much today. Because I also want to be available to start doing the Friday the 13th reviews next week. So I'm going to try to record my Spider-Man Far From Home review sometime this weekend. And then next week we're going to get into the uh, Friday the 13th stuff. And I owe you guys at least 12 movie reviews. We're going to review all the movies. I'll try to get the game and some of the other stuff, the documentary if I can, or maybe I'll just reference them, that, you know, reference those things in the other episodes. We'll figure something out and I'll figure out some kind of format for it. But for the most part, it'll be me 
just discussing those movies uh, and because I promised you guys that I would do them like two years ago and I forgot last year so this year is all about Friday the 13th so we'll do a Venom vlog Friday 13th movie review series starting very soon. So thank you all so much for watching the show. As always, we have more content coming up. I'll do the news episode next, and then we'll do Absolute Carnage this weekend, and then next week we'll get back into our regular schedule. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We'll see you in the future. Peace.